In the Islam Christian Forum category, Islam in and on scripture, Muhammad in prophecy, we have a thread, no Muslim is a Muslim unless he believes in Jesus. Those of us that bring the gospel to Muhammad's followers are well familiar with this famous quote and the empty lip service paid to Jesus contained therein, parroted over and over and over again by the adoring Bible ignorant minions of the famous Greek sophist-styled entertainer Amadidat. Muhammad's followers repeat this preposterous claim even as they profess the exact opposite of the whole subject of the gospel as an article of their faith in Muhammad, rejecting and blaspheming the very blood of the Lamb of God that would save them, along with the holy scriptures through which the truth is revealed. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. This is often accompanied by a declaration that they believe that Jesus was a great prophet, even as they must believe Jesus to be a false prophet. And Jesus said unto them, The Son of Man shall be betrayed unto the chief priests and unto the scribes, and they shall condemn him to death, and shall deliver him to the Gentiles to mock and to scourge and to crucify him, and the third day he shall rise again. Over the last nearly 2,000 years, there has never been a single Christian that did not believe in the crucifixion, death, and resurrection of the Messiah, who saves all from sin who have faith in his shed blood, because that's the whole subject of the gospel. Over the last nearly 1,400 years, there has never been a follower of Muhammad that did not deny that Jesus was crucified and reject the blood that would save them. In other words, no Muslim is a Muslim unless he denies the crucifixion of Jesus Christ, and no Muslim is a Muslim unless he denies the blood of the Lamb of God. The Gospel instructs the followers of the Messiah how to believe in Jesus. The Quran instructs the followers of Muhammad how to disbelieve in and deny Jesus by rejecting the whole subject of the Gospel. Nor has there ever been a follower of Muhammad that didn't disbelieve and deny that Jesus is the Son of God. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him, and he in God. And according to Muhammad's Allah, fight those, even if they are the people of the book. The Jews call Uzera son of Allah, and the Christians call Christ the son of Allah. Allah's curse be on them, how they are deluded away from the truth. Islam is the only anti-another religion religion. Muhammad even directing his alter ego, Allah's curse on God's people. He is Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. Jews and Christians believe we are God's children and He our Father. Muhammad and thus his followers reject God as their Father. So no Muslim is a Muslim unless he denies that Jesus is the Son of God. There is no shortage of secular historians, agnostics, and atheists that believe in Jesus to the extent that the historical record makes it too difficult to deny that Jesus existed. Even Muhammad's followers' favorite agnostic, Bart Ehrman, accepts the compelling historical evidence of Jesus' existence and crucifixion. The preposterous claim of Muhammad's followers that they believe in Jesus is akin to a Christian saying, I believe in Muhammad, and I believe I am washed by the shed blood of the Messiah, the Lamb of God who was crucified, died, and was resurrected, to save all who have faith in his shed blood from dying to our sins. Is that something someone who believes in Muhammad could say? Muhammad's followers would more likely scornfully laugh at the very suggestion of it. In essence, a follower of Muhammad is saying, I believe in Jesus while I reject the 1600 year record of Yahweh and mankind that he is revealed through, deny the whole subject of the gospel, reject the blood of the Lamb of God shed for me, as I prostrate myself toward the Quraysh pagans black stone idol in Mecca five times a day, 
engage in occult Sabian prayer, Ramadan, and ablution rituals, as well as thinly repackaged Quraysh, Moon, Sun, and Star Worship rituals around the Kaaba and run between al Saf and al Marwa as Arabian jinn devil worshippers did before Muhammad, even though there is no record of Mecca ever having existed before the 4th century AD. When Islamic so-called tradition is pointed out to Muhammad's followers as having been created in its entirety during the 7th to 10th centuries AD by a bunch of semi-literate southwest Arabian desert dwellers, yet it masquerades as thousands of years of pre-Muhammad history, the whole fiction having been penned without reference to any actual historical record from before the 6th century AD, what is their answer? The same answer is when you ask them why they prostrate themselves to the Quraysh pagan's black stone idol five times a day, or ask them to present some historical or archaeological evidence that suggests that Mecca ever existed before pagan immigrants from Yemen settled the area in the 4th century AD and built their Kaaba in the early 5th century for Arabian star family worship. The only factual answer there is for following Muhammad and engaging in his adopted and adapted pagan Arabian rituals is purely because the false prophet Muhammad told his followers to follow him. At least in the 7th century his followers were attracted by sex slaves and their share of the booty, that is, property stolen from others. So rather than presenting historical evidence of Mecca, because they can't since none exists, they instead accelerate their blasphemy against one true God, Yahweh, and his 1,600-year record to mankind as revealed through all of his prophets and witnesses, as if that will somehow magically create a historical and archaeological record of Mecca prior to the 4th century A.D. Blaspheming Yahweh, even as they desperately wish in vain that Muhammad's heavily abrogated 23-year 7th century record has a relationship with the very same scriptures of the Jews and Christians that they blaspheme. Christians who keep their videos open to comments expend massive amounts of time to repetition ad nauseum, absent replies to responses, obscured through a rapidly revolving 500 character snipe and run YouTube format. YouTube provides a prime opportunity for obfuscation, mass confusion, running away from one's own words, and the censorship that Islam has required ever since Muhammad discouraged others from asking him questions and murdered poets that embarrassed him. The same reason 52 Antichrist nations restrict the gospel. The powers of darkness cannot stand the light of truth. There's a map from Voice of the Martyrs of the countries that have banned or restricted the gospel. Rather than addressing the subject of the videos, Muhammad's followers will instead generally engage in a cacophony of blasphemy against the one true God of the scriptures on matters that aren't even related to the subject of the video. The first link under each of my videos it's an invitation to join me for discussion in this Islam Christian forum in a venue with virtually unlimited comment length where we can quote each other, post live links, and engage in a thoughtful discussion over time with a well-organized and easily searchable record of our exchange that even includes a unique URL to each and every post. Do we have to wonder why Muhammad's followers are so afraid of a venue where the only rule is that folks have to engage in an exchange, that is, actually respond to replies to responses. May the good Lord work in the hearts of Muhammad's followers and lead them to the truth. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me.